The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. I had to check three different times to make sure that this article that I was reading from the Huffington Post was not actually written by the onion.com. Um, the article is about a 37 year old from Charlotte, Charlottesville, Virginia, who is running for office and he is a proud pedophile. He's also, um, well, I mean, there's, there's a list of things that's as disgusting as the words that I just strung together. As disgusting as that is, there's actually much more in the article, um, that is equally disturbing. I checked three times. It's a real article. This is a real guy who's running for office and he believes that he can make it into office because we are uh, in an era of political incorrectness. Remember I was saying this week, what, what I was saying this week, this is the logical extreme, right? This, this guy, Nathan Larson, 37 year old from Charlottesville running for Congress, um, He's advocating for a platform that I'll read you specifically, but his platform includes legalizing child pornography. Uh, His platform includes legalizing incest. His platform includes white supremacy. His platform includes all these things that that at one time would have relegated you to the dregs of society. And you would know as an individual that you literally need to stay in the dark, seedy parts of society and not show your face Because society would smack you down. And rightfully so, because there we while we may not because of virtue of the Constitution, so long as this guy has not acted on his actions, there's nothing that we can really do to stop to to imprison him or to, you know, we can't take his life liberty in pursuit of happiness. Read between the lines. I'm trying to be as professional as I can. We can't do that. But what we did as a society was to say that there are certain things that we will not accept in the public square. And for the longest time, what we accepted in the public square included, you know, standard racism. It was no big deal. Right. It was a part of of America, white supremacy, the Klan. All that was a part of America, part and parcel for what it meant to be American. But there was a glimmering moment there in American history where not only did we reject dregs of society like this guy based on his sexual uh, disorders but we also rejected you because you were uh, you, you were a right wing, racist, fascist, neo-Nazi. All these things were dismissed out of the public square. And that's the only reason I think this story is worth covering, not because of him as an individual, because, you know, the Huffington Post, they're going to get a million views on this. They're going to make money off of this article. This guy probably stands no chance of winning whatsoever. But. It says a lot about our society that he feels so comfortable with where we are because of his words, not mine. We're in a society of being politically incorrect and because of his words, not mine, because someone like Donald Trump made it to the White House. He believes that he as a pedophile, as a person who is advocating for uh, for incest. Can make it to the way and and a person, you know, let me stop. It's hard for me to even discuss it. It's 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 because it's so unbelievable. But these are his exact words. This was not a tape. And mind you, they're reporting not on a tape that they found of somebody. They're reporting on a conversation. They picked up the phone. The Huffington Post, they called this guy. And this is what he said. He said with regard, actually, before I go into, into any more of his predilections, let me go into his platform. According to Larson's campaign manifesto, his and this is directly from the Huffington Post quote, according to Larson's campaign manifesto, his platform as a quasi neo reactionary libertarian candidate includes protecting gun ownership rights, establishing free trade and protecting benevolent white supremacy, as well as legalizing incestuous marriage and child pornography. And I just read I read right past those because I, because it is as unbelievable as you read. It's not unbelievable that we have sick people like this in our society. What's unbelievable is that we have gotten to a point where being politically incorrect is so embedded in the psyche of our of our of our collective body politic. Like that's the thing. That's all the rave to be politically incorrect. We've gone so far into the realm of political incorrectness that this guy believes that he has the right to promote his platform and he thinks he has a chance of winning. 
Let me read more of his platform before I, 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 dis, I dissect it. These are his words, not mine. He said, quote, a lot of people are tired of political correctness and being constrained by it. He said, people prefer when there's an outsider who doesn't have anything to lose and is willing to say what's on a lot of people's minds. Who does that sound like to you? Well, if it sounds like Trump, that's because he is talking about Trump. This is the Huffington Post. They continued, quote, when asked what his constituents would think about his pedophilic writings, because he used to write a, a, about pedophilia all the time. Uh, he ran a he ran a forum about pedophilia. He said, quote, people are open minded. He continued, a lot of people who disagree with someone like Trump might vote for them anyway, just because the establishment doesn't like them. So, in other words, he looks at Donald Trump as a model. Because Donald Trump was an individual who could say what other people were, what, what was on other people's minds. And Donald Trump wasn't constrained by political correctness, his words, not mine. And he believes that he is a, as a, as a pedophile advocating for child pornography and incest can make it to Congress. 37 year old Nathan Larson. I don't know if I said his name already. I'll say it again just in case. It's it's uh it's mind boggling. It's it's mind boggling. It's uh it is important because we are literally opening up the floodgates for the most disgusting people in society to feel as though they have a right to be in the public square because we are rejecting political correctness and societal norms. Here is the amazing irony of this. For years, we had right wing evangelical television televangelist preachers telling us that because we've rejected God and we've taken God out of schools that what we're going to have, uh, we're going to have the perverts and the, 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 the socialists and the company, you know, the video I played the other day, right, where they literally called uh, leftist perverts. We had an entire generation of preachers who warned against this type of guy, but they warned against it because of progressivism. They warned against it because we were advocating for the rights of, of the LGBTQ community. But this guy is uh, ostensibly, I mean, I don't know what his sexual orientation is. It doesn't really outline it, but he was married and he's talking about having sex with girl children, right? So, so in, in the irony is clear here. Right. The, the sickest and the most disgusting thing that you can imagine being inserted into the public psyche and to the public conversation is coming from the right. Probably this guy might even consider himself to be a Christian. That's the sad irony of all of this. And so now in the name of rejecting societal norms, where we as a body politic said there are certain things that we are going to put up with and certain things that we are not. We may not be able to to uh, get things. We may not be able to regulate it through law, through legislation. We may not be able to uh, legislate morality, but we as a collective uh, uh, consciousness can say we reject this. And what has offended evangelicals for years is that we do not reject two consenting adults to do whatever they want to in the privacy of their bedroom. That's their business. Whatever two consenting adults do, that's that regardless of their gender. Right. They and, and evangelicals for years looked at us and said that we were the problem when in reality, this has been in the backdrop of their beliefs, of their, of their churches, of their communities, of their ideologies for years. And now the only reason it's coming into the public square, right? I'm not blaming this on evangelicals altogether, but the reason specifically that this is coming into the public square is because we're in an era where everyone feels that we can be anything we want in the public square because we're doing it in the name of being politically incorrect. I mean, you really, well, and then I can't leave off the example that he gave of Donald Trump. All right, let me uh, let's tell you a little bit more about this guy, right? So um, 
in regards to pedophilia, this is what he said. Um, he said, Lar Larson said this, quote, that the word pedophile is vague and just a label, adding that it's normal for men to be attracted to underage women. He said he did not commit any crimes. Then he went on to say in a 3,300 word essay uh, on his website, he said how to uh, the title of this article is to how to psych yourself up to feel entitled to rape. And he said, don't forget Feminism is the problem and rape is the solution. On the platform, this is still in the Huffington Post, on the platform, he also advocated for father-daughter marriage, killing women and raping virgins. This is not only a... This is what's brewing on the right. This is what's brewing. I mean, because the language here is spe he's specifically talking to incels and voluntary celibates, which is a very specific ideology that's brewing on the right and being fed intellectual credence from people like Jordan Peterson. This is a phenomenon that's coming from the right and it's coming in the name of being anti politically correct and rejecting societal norms. And that is. If I can say it again and say it more precisely, that is the sickest irony of it all is that in the name of rejecting societal norms and political correctness, we now have the most disgusting people from the dregs of our society inserting themselves into the national conversation because they feel like they have the right to because we're in this era of political incorrectness. And for years, we were warned that these type of people would come from the left because we happen to think that two consenting adults, it's the conflation, right? Before I even finish that sentence, it is the sick and disgusting conflation that people like evangelicals have always made that said that, uh, that pedophilia comes from homosexuality. And here, we're at the example that's in front of us today the person in the name of rejecting political correctness is saying, no, pedophilia is cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's coming from person on the right wing side of the equation. And I would, you know, they didn't ask him, but if I would put any money on it. This guy is considers himself a Christian. Isn't that just the sickest irony? I mean, look at where we are. So, I mean, again, this is not to analyze him because I don't think that He's significant or he's important. I don't think that he's going to make it anywhere. It is a statement of where we are. The pendulum has swung all the way to the, 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 to the side of obscenity of rejecting societal norms. And if I if I would just ex expound on this a little bit more, just give me a few more minutes, because, you know, there religious people, religious fundamentalists on the right want to insert uh, biblically based morality into societal norms and reject societal norms that come as a collective body politic over the years we have decided that there are certain things that we don't want in our public square that are not acceptable there are things that we we believe are not acceptable even if we don't base that morality on religion you know, we have we, we actually have standards. <laughs> I have standards that are based on the Bible, but then there are people who have standards that are not based on the Bible. And you and I, we can agree that this coming from the right is completely unacceptable. Yet they're the ones that are telling us that we're immoral because we happen to be on the side that are on the side of people of, of two consenting adults being able to do whatever they want to do in their bedroom. This is this is like. This is mind boggling. It, it really is a twisted place that we live in. But a, a I don't want to say a sweet irony, but it's just a, a, a shocking irony. Maybe it even shouldn't be shouldn't even be shocking when you consider what uh, the Catholic Church did all those years with, with the priest and, and the altar boys. Maybe it shouldn't be shocking because this is this is actually um you can always find underneath the rug, underneath the carpet of, of religious fundamentalism, you will always find some of the most disgusting things that you have ever seen in any category. And it's amazing that they're hitting us, they're berating us, they're bludgeoning us because of their perceived, our perceived rejection of their standards of morality. And yet they're the ones who are bringing the most disgusting 
ideas into the public square. I can't talk about this anymore. Listen, when I tell you that the value of black lives in America is actually worthless, I'm not being hyperbolic. St. Lucie County, Florida, 30 year old man, 2014, he was wrongfully killed by police officers in his own home. We'll go through the details in a minute, but his family was just awarded four cents, four pennies for the wrongful death of their father, their husband. Four cents. The actual award was four dollars. But because they said that Gregory Von Hill Jr. was 99 percent responsible for his own killing, that the family only gets four cents. The officer uh, involved was only responsible for one percent of this man's death. Never mind the fact that in 2014, when sheriff's deputies came to his home, they came for a noise noise ordinance violation. Right. Something pretty innocuous, something that should not end with anyone dying. Right. Never mind the fact that the reason they used to justify the fact that he was only this officer was only one percent liable was because Hill was drunk. But Hill was in his home. So now you can't be a black person and drink in your home, because if you drink in your home and the police have an encounter with you, then you're ninety nine percent responsible for your death, even though. Hill was shot through a garage door as the garage door was going down, which means there was enough space of separation between Hill and the officer that now Hill posed no threat to the officer. But still, if you're in your own home and you manage to be drunk in your own home and you clo- you're closing a garage door on police officers, then you're 99 percent responsible for your own death. Oh, and let's throw in for good measure, because, you know, they have to vilify this black man, even though he's dead. They have to make him look even worse. Let's throw in for good measure that after they killed him, they found an unloaded weapon in his pocket. God forbid that you're a gun owner in America and you happen to be black and you're in your home and you happen to be drunk in your own home and you're closing the garage, which means there's separation between you and the police officer. You pose absolutely no threat to this officer, yet they shoot you and you're 99 percent responsible for your own death. Not to mention, your life is only worth four dollars. Four dollars, not four thousand. I mean, that's less than what we were worth during slavery. I mean, you could get more for a stud during slavery than you could for being a black person today in 2018. This is an insult to injury. The injury was a wrongful death. The insult is this 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 award from his jury, a jury of his peers. I guarantee you how much you want to bet that 99 percent, if not 100 percent of this jury was all white. And they're trying to make a statement. They're trying to mock this family. They're trying to mock black lives. And to them, this is just a funny ha ha he he game. But these are real lives of people. Thankfully, there's a GoFundMe account. I'll post the link in the description. This family is getting an outpouring from regular, good, decent human beings versus the disgusting scum of the earth down there in St. Lucie County who looked at this man's family, his two girls, his widow, and said that your your husband and your father, his life was only worth four dollars. But now you don't even get four dollars. You get four cents. White supremacy in America is a hell of a drug. There is no limit to how much hatred they can foment. This is where we are in America. This is literally where we are. Like we're, we're going to a place where they feel that the right thing for them to do is to hurt us and to insult us, to vilify us, to kill us and then blame it on us when they kill us wrongfully. That's why I don't have time for for conservatives. That's why I don't have time for for uh, uh, for people who will try to say that that uh, I don't have time for the games that they put up. We don't have time for the games that they put up around us trying to make us jump through hurdles to be acceptable in society. And no matter what we do, no matter how acceptable we try to make ourselves, they will still kill us and blame us for our death. That's why we don't have time for these games. That's why we don't have time for respectability politics, because there's no suit that you could put on that will make you acceptable to them. Because at the end of the day, if they can find a way to vilify you, if they can find a way to make you look bad, if they can find a way to make you the villain. And even if they can't, even if the evidence, the preponderance of evidence is against the sheriff's officer, the police officer, 
you still will get nothing. You still will be vilified. You will still be the thug. You will still be the dead person and your family gets $4. I'm sorry, no. Your family gets four cents. In America, 2018. And for real, that's why I don't have time to apologize to conservatives for anything, anything. There will never be a thing that I feel that we should apologize to them for because we are engaged in an asymmetrical fight against people who have no real morals except for their own agenda. Right. The only thing, the only time they will recognize morality is when it benefits their agenda. They are clearly hypocritical. They have no qualms with using profanity against us. They have no qualms with using free speech against us and then trying to take our free speech from us. I'm talking about Samantha B, whose show I really I've never even watched Samantha B. I don't think I've seen a single episode of Samantha B. Uh, no, I'm positive. I've never seen a single episode of Samantha B. And I honestly don't really care for her after watching the little clip that I that I watched. It seemed contrived. Her, her you know, actually watch. Listen to the clip. Ivanka Trump, who works at the White House, chose to post the second most oblivious tweet we've seen this week. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless cunt. He listens to you. So even her profanity, her her vulgarity, even though she was trying to make a, a poignant point about uh, immigration policy, even her vulgarity and her profanity was contrived. Like, I don't really feel you. You know what I mean? Like when you when you cuss, you really got to drop it in a very sincere fashion. You didn't do that. So I'm not really a fan of Samantha B. I could care less if TBS get rid of her. But what I, one thing I will not do is ever apologize to conservatives, especially when they are using this free speech absolutism against us. When they want to be able to say anything they want to say to us, they want to be able to call me the N word, but don't want me to be able to call them a racist. That's why we don't have time to play games with them. And if you are a progressive or a liberal or you're woke or whatever, if you're still, if you still believe that it's more important that we play nice with people who would just as soon award a family who just lost their father four dollars and they think that that's the right and moral thing to do. If you're still playing nice with people like that. Then you're not our ally and we don't need you. You're actually a, you're, you're actually a hindrance. You're in the way. You need to get the hell out of the way. And so when when Samantha B apologized for that clip, you know, that that to me signified all the more reasons she should come off the air because she doesn't have the she doesn't have the backbone enough to actually handle the situations we need to handle. Right. Republicans, conservatives, they have no problem. Look at Donald Trump. Look at all the times he's used profanity. Look at all the people he mocked. Look at how he called NFL players uh, sons of bitches. And yet he wants to feign as though he's disappointed in Samantha B saying on Twitter, uh, quote, why aren't they firing no talent Samantha B for the horrible language she used on her low rating show? A total double standard, but that's OK. We are winning and we'll be winning for a long time to come. The double standard he's talking about, obviously, is Roseanne Barr, Roseanne losing her show this week. And this is the other game. This is the other game they play and why we don't have time to play games with them is because they're trying to conflate profanity with racism. They're trying to say that a person who used profanity is just as bad as Roseanne, who used racism, used language to attack a black woman, calling her an ape. Or from the planet of the apes. And they're so desperate to keep the power struggle in their favor. They're so desperate to keep the pendulum from ever swinging back out from their favor. Because right now, everything is Donald Trump is right. They are winning. But they're so desperate that they're willing or they're trying to redefine racism to mean nothing but profanity. I mean, that's their goal. They want to water down what it is to be racist so bad because they know that racism is a disease that infects predominantly conservative white people. And don't get it twisted. I know there's some there's some there's listen, I can tell you some stories about some liberals and progressives who are racist. We'll get to that on another episode. But when you talk about the overwhelming preponderance, the overwhelming uh, 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 majority of racists in America. You're going to find them perfectly fitting right there in the Republican Party. And that's why they have a goal. Their goal is to be able to say racism isn't really a bad thing. 
racism shouldn't make you lose your job. You know, if somebody calls a black woman an ape, she shouldn't have lost her job. Oh, but if Samantha B uses a C word, oh, she should lose her job. That's the game that they're playing with us. The White House, the White House even came out yesterday. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she came out yesterday and said that, uh, quote, the language used by Samantha B last night is vile and vicious. The collective silence by the left and its media allies is appalling. Well, first of all, that's BS because there's so many uh, people on the left, liberals who want to be good liberals, and they're saying that Samantha B should apologize. So first of all, you're lying. But second of all, it just shows how, how weak and spineless so many liberals are. But Huckabee Sanders continued. She said her disgusting comments and show are not fit for broadcast. And the executives at Time Warner and TBS must demonstrate that such expli- explicit profanity about female members of this administration will not be condoned on its network. In other words, The White House, the press secretary, is calling for the firing of someone who did something on their job. If you really are concerned about free speech in America, then you should absolutely, at the the apex of concern, be worried about the White House issuing a statement saying that an employer should fire their employee because they said something that we don't like. But it's not really, again, like I said on my other show uh, uh, earlier this week, it's not about free speech. It's about protecting their free speech and taking away our free speech. It's not about their feelings being hurt. It's about, it's, it's about them being able to say anything they want to say about us and about us never being able to call them the bigots that they are. They want to be able to call us anything in the book. They want so badly to say the N word like they could taste it, but they just don't want you to be able to call them a racist. That's why we don't have time to play games with them. That's why we don't have time to try to negotiate them. We are in in an asymmetrical fight where they are trying their very best. They are trying their very best to get all of the chips in their corner so that we people who are fighting for social justice, we who are fighting for uh, 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 civil rights, we who are fighting against white supremacy have absolutely no ability to speak out or call out their their bigotry. But they have every right to speak out and call out and say whatever the hell they want to say about us. That's the society that they want. And it's evident by the fact that they are willing to infringe on the free speech of NFL players, but get upset when Roseanne Barr loses her job for being a bigot. It's evident in the in the false equivalence that they made in the first place. Right. Trying to uh, uh, equate speaking out against bigotry to being the same as using bigotry and saying bigoted things, right? It's now evident in the fact that they want Samantha B to lose her job, but they don't want Roseanne Barr to lose her job. If we keep playing with these, with these false equivalences, we keep playing with them trying to prove that we're the bigger person and we're the better person. We keep playing with them like this. They're going to, we're going to wake up one day and they are going to be in power and able to destroy every Liberty that we have. Some people are out here coddling racists and coddling Nazis and saying we need to protect their free speech. But once they get what they want, they have made it clear. Listen to Richard Spencer as he says that he is not really in favor of free speech. Uh, But as far as government regulation, I mean, yes, I think in the short term we would favor government regulation of speech. But long term, uh, are we even pro free speech? No, of course not. But we have to use this platform in order. So we're we're being radically honest here. Yes, radically pragmatic. Yes. The bottom line is this. We absolutely cannot play games with unreasonable people. We cannot be reasonable with unreasonable people at an unreasonable time, at a time where they are absolutely trying to shape society into into be into being what it was before we ever got civil rights in the first place they want when they say make america great again they mean take us back to a time when they could call us a nigger and never have any ramifications any repercussions and we had no ability to call them out for it that's what they want and so for them to do that today all they have to do is use free speech against us right so that any time one of their people say something mean, bigoted, evil, racist, homophobic, transphobic, you know, it's OK, you know, because of free speech. But let somebody on our side of the equation who I don't even really care for. Samantha B could lose her job as far as I'm concerned. 
But let somebody on our side of the equation use profanity and they're going to make it as big, if not bigger than racism. In order to silence them. Y'all better stop playing games with these people, man. We don't have time for it. We don't have time. We, we, we're in a losing battle already. And this is why people like Samantha. Uh, here's a statement. Quote, I would like to sincerely apologize to Ivanka Trump and to my viewers for using an expletive on my show to describe her last night. It was inappropriate and inexcusable. I crossed the line and I deeply regret it. No. Please. You did not cross a line. And the fact that you think you did and you issue this apology means that you're not really suited to be in the front of this battle. I mean, you're, you're not even a good entertainer, right? So stop using our fight as a way of promoting your show when you're not really equipped to go all the way in the fight for us. I like what Minnie Driver said. She said that was uh, on Twitter. She said this quote, that was the wrong word for Samantha B to have used, but mostly because to paraphrase the French, Ivanka has neither the warmth nor the depth. I'm done. Folks, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you Monday. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Thank you.